Church. I'm blessed to be joining you today for an important conversation that just might save your life. I'm your host, Reverend Deborah Morgan Stokes, the Senior Minister of East Dallas Christian Church. Joining me today is Dr. Carolee Estelle, MD, an infectious disease physician at UT Southwestern Medical Center and the Associate Chief at Parkland and a member of CV Roman Medical Society, the DFW chapter of NMA. We know that the last 18 months has been hard on a lot of you as we continue to fight COVID-19. There's been all kinds of media, rumors, and misinformation about COVID and the COVID vaccine circulating in our community. So today I've invited Dr. Estelle to give us real answers to real questions. These are questions that a lot of you have asked me. And so I wanted to bring in an expert from our community to straighten things out for us. Dr. Estelle treats our family members, friends, and neighbors, and has seen firsthand what COVID has done to people. She's also studied the science and is going to answer our top questions to dispel a number of rumors that you may have heard. Dr. Estelle, welcome. And let me start off by asking you a question that I have been asked and, and concerns that have been brought to me about the mRNA vaccines and their safety for our individuals in our church. Are, are they natural? Are the mRNA vaccines um, putting something unnatural into our bodies? That is a really excellent question. Um, so we want to first state that the all the vaccines that are currently available here in the U.S., there's two messenger RNA vaccines and one um, that's a viral vector uh, vaccine. All of them have been very rigorously studied to evaluate for safety first and then efficacy. And it's only after we reach that point of establishing that they're safe um, and then that they are effective that we can actually release them into um, circulation for use in the general population. Uh, and the clinical trials that were done um, were, were done without missing any of the usual steps. We do all of these steps for every vaccine in the past and also all the medicines that people frequently take for their diabetes and their high blood pressure, we do similar um, clinical trials for those as well. And so what's really great about these vaccines is there is no actual virus in them. So you cannot get COVID from any of these three vaccines, right? So uh, what they have is a short code coding for a part of the protein of the vac of the virus called the spike protein. And then that gets delivered to our bodies with, through the vaccine. Um, and then our bodies are able to read that and then they can recognize that spike protein or the code for that spike protein that's on every single COVID virus that's out there. And then it can attack it and fight it when it sees it again. And so actually these vaccines have a really short list of, of ingredients. Um, basically, it's that messenger RNA code, some lipids, some acids, some base, and, uh, and some lipid. I think I already mentioned that. So it's really actually a very short list of ingredients that you can discuss with your, your doctor about if you have any allergies to those ingredients and the like. So um, they're actually um, uh, uh, no preservatives, um, no mercury, no, um, no uh, animal parts or anything of that nature that sometimes folks get concerned about being in some vaccines. Well, that, it sounds like it is natural. Things that are already in our body that help our bodies fight the virus. That's, that's great news. Um, and, and then some of my folks are really worried about um, the short testing range that we have had, the short time we've had to see how it does work. And it, they're, con they're concerned that um, those of us who've had the vaccine are guinea pigs for some, um, to see what might happen to us if we grow another head or, you know, if we have problems 
um, with pregnancy is a real concern for some of my folks. What do you say to that? Those are excellent questions as well. So um, what's really important to note about these um, vaccine clinical trials and the way and the reason that they're designed the way they are is that the vast majority of any of the side effects and at, well, adverse effects that might be happening from uh, the vaccines will occur within two months of administration. And so that is why um, they're designed the way they are to get the bulk of this information uh, collected in that first two months. And as we've even seen with this and countless vaccines before it, um, any adverse reactions occur typically within two months. Um, these clinical trials do continue beyond that for you know, a number of years, one to two years frequently, um, and beyond in many cases as well. Um, but the what what we're really watching for is what occurs in that time period. Um, when you ask about things like, um, is it altering my DNA? Is it going to make something bad happen to me? And that goes back again to what is in those vaccines is just a code for a part of that protein that's on the outside of the virus, the spike protein. And none of that interferes with your own or our own DNA in any way. It doesn't change who we are or how our um, bodies do anything. It actually just takes advantage of what our bodies normally do so that it can recognize it in the future. And then you ask question about sort of fertility yes, and pregnancy yes, right. and the like, and that has got a lot of folks worried as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to know that these vaccines do not harbor any um, components that target the um, uh, the parts of the body that are reproductive um, in terms of our, our reproductive organs or any of the cells that are involved in reproduction. Um, so there's no impact on infertility um, from that perspective. In terms of our um, infants and if you're having, if you're pregnant and could, should you get it, can you get it, is it safe to get it? What you've probably already heard is that pregnant women were excluded from the initial um, uh, clinical trials. However, a number of women did become pregnant while on the clinical trials, and we didn't see any issues. Now, the number of those women was too small for us to you know, feel very confident about it. But in the interim, since the vaccines have rolled out, hundreds of thousands, uh, if, if not millions at this point, of women have actually gotten COVID vaccine during all stages of pregnancy, and there have been no changes in the background rates of miscarriages or uh, fetal outcomes, which has been really good. And this is in contrast to women who are pregnant that get COVID have worse outcomes of COVID. They are more likely to end up in the ICU and require a breathing tube and have um, preterm or other issues with um, the term of their pregnancy. If you get COVID while you're pregnant, it's much more dangerous at this point that we can see um, than the vaccine in and of itself. Um, so right now it is recommended by the CDC and ACOG, which are some of our obstetric and gynecologic um, medical societies. Right now they, they recommend that pregnant women get the vaccine. That's really comforting to know. So thank you for answering those questions. And um, the, the final question that, that our folks in our congregation are dealing with is, is that many have been vaccinated. They've had their, their two doses of Moderna or Pfizer or their one of J&J. Um, and some have come down with COVID. So can you talk a little bit about why there may be breakthrough cases, even if you have had the vaccine. Yes. So what we want to go back to is what's the primary purpose of the vaccine and what's the big, what's the biggest deal about COVID is all the people that it's putting in the hospital, making go to the ICU and dying. That's the biggest issue. We want to prevent those complications. Uh, the majority of people who get COVID do have mild disease, but the proportion that end up in the hospital and dying are what is the concern um, because of such low background uh, exposure, right? It's a new virus. Nobody's bodies have ever seen it. And so everyone is susceptible until we get past that. Um, so what's important? 
important is that we know that there no vaccine is perfect, no medicine is perfect. All of them will have uh, breakthroughs of their own kind. Um, so we do see breakthrough in our um, all three of the vaccines. Um, but what we do see is what we know is that even right now with Delta variant, which is much more infectious and causes um, uh, more severe disease and has some ability to get around our vaccines, it reduces your risk of getting um, a positive COVID test by five times. It also reduces your risk of being hospitalized or in the ICU and death by more than 10 times compared to um, those who have not. Um, so uh, the uh, rate of getting a breakthrough infection um, is, is about, it's 0.007%, I think, as of the August 30th data of the people who get vaccinated, 0.007% will end up in the hospital. Um, and so that is a really, really important reduction in those complications especially as we think about you and others of our healthcare workers who have been on the front line. I just thank you so much for the work that you've done. And um, as we get ready to close this conversation, I, I am grateful for the way you have answered questions that have come to me as pastor. And I'm not the expert, you are. <laughs> and I hope that those of you watching today will take this information and share it with friends and family. The vaccine is free and it's available at almost every drugstore, grocery store, pharmacy, or community clinic. If you cannot locate a vaccine, go online the dshs.texas.gov COVID vaccine to find a location. We can and must protect ourselves and each other, brothers and sisters. So please spread the word that getting vaccinated is the only way out of this pandemic. And may God bless us all and keep us safe.